And welcome back to a crazy video. In this video, I move thousands of ants by hand, yes, by hand, into a bigger enclosure. If you haven't seen any of my ant videos, for the last year or so, we've been keeping a few different species of Australian ants. The ants in this video are meat ants, which are the ones that build those massive, massive nests where someone will dump a dead carcass on it and they will completely eat the whole carcass within a few days. Yes, they bite. They're not venomous, but they do hurt when they bite. Anyway, let's get started and show you the old setup and then the new setup. So this is one of my ant nests. Well, technically it's a fornicarium, which is like an ant terrarium. Lots of pipes, lots of ants. We have these, which are called outworlds, which is just a little areas where the ants forage and stuff. They go down all their little pipes into their nests. Lots of nests, because this colony is about a year old. We have stacks of nests down the bottom. There are nests along the side there. The queen is in there somewhere. What we're going to do is replace this whole entire thing with a slightly smaller exoterra enclosure and then we're going to have two outworlds on the top. So if I turn around here, I've already started drilling holes in stuff just with a normal glass drill bit thingy. So these are our two outworlds which are obviously a lot bigger. I think they're like a 45 centimeter aquarium. Instead of using the lids, I've cut a piece of glass which is going to sit perfectly on top and drilled out holes so I can have little ventilation bits. So two lids on top. This is the back of the tank. So the front obviously is the other side, but two holes in each one of these. Those holes are gonna go with tubing, haha, -ha, down the bottom into here and into there and then back in again. So that they're, all the nests will be inside this enclosure. They're not gonna be able to get out of this enclosure. So they're not gonna be free range in here, but they're gonna be free range in there all going well. So that is where we are. We've got lots of bits and pieces. These are just hardware store, tea pieces, different size tubing, all that wonderful stuff. So next thing we are going to do is move all that down, move this up, and then we're gonna spend hours picking ants out of those and going into these. Oh, they heard me say the word ant. There goes the sirens. Anyway, let's get started and move everything around and catch some ants. And I underestimated how much of a nightmare this was to do. So lots and lots of bits and pieces everywhere. Everything is out. Now the fun bit is to catch all the ants. And yes, I've tried to catch them by hand. Put your finger in, they will bite you like this little bugger has, and then place her in there. So they can't get out of the top of that because it's got fluorin on top, which is just a sort of a synthetic stuff that stops the ants from climbing out. So they will eat the fluorin, which is why that white bit on the bottom of that is still there. I did try and use ant tweezers, thanks to Antastic for giving me some ant tweezers. Kind of work, but when you've got hundreds and hundreds of ants to move, yeah, it's kind of easier by hand, unless you're allergic to them or if they're really, really bitey. Meat ants are kind of bitey, but you know, they're not gonna really kill you unless, yeah, you go into anaphylactic shock, which we didn't. Anyway, this is the next day. We have multiple ants in this enclosure. I didn't move them because they had so much larvae underneath this rock that it was just pointless trying to take them all out of this. So I've just really plumbed this tank up to the two outworlds that we've got set up as well. There are way, way too many ants in this outworld. So eventually I wanna replace it with a bigger one, but for the time being, they can just stay there and go ballistic now that they've got different areas to sort of move around, I guess. But that is the tube that goes all the way down to the back of these two outworlds. These are the two new tanks all set up that they cannot get out of. They've got a lovely muscle to munch away on. <laughs> yes, that is an aquatic muscle for them to chew on. And there is the other tank there. So I have sprayed with a little bit of water, so there's gonna be a lot of condensation soon that you'll see, but that is where we are with them. So we've got our T-Rex skull. He's got a little bottle of drink. We have our tubing right down the back that connects these two outworlds out together. And it's just roughly the little T-joiners. That's connected down the bottom to this other piece of tubing. There they are there, little ants in their ant highway and they will just work their way up and down. So they actually have a really good grip on them. They can climb glass, obviously, so they can climb the PVC tubing as well. And then that is just another little T piece going into the nest area. And the nest area is a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, to join them all up, I've sort of left a lot of the tubing that I had in the other system because it was just a little bit too hard to try and 
pull all the tubing apart, rig it all back up together. So a few of these nests are new nests, like the bigger one at the front. That's why there's no ants in there at the moment, but there are ants in the, uh, ants under this one here. So there's a lot of larvae in there. The queen is somewhere. Not entirely sure where she is, but she is somewhere in one of those nests. But that is where we are. We have our two outworlds. They are doing super, super well. Here they are munching away, so you can sort of see a close-up shot of all the lovely ladies doing their thing. Yes, why would you keep ants as pets? Well, they're kind of cool. Why wouldn't you keep ants as pets? Look at them. These all came from one queen, and now there would be thousands of workers. These are all girls. Eventually, they're going to produce flying boys, drones, and the flying queens. They will fly off, they will mate. Obviously, they're not going to fly off in this sort of enclosure, but we might rescue them as they're winged and put them in a separate container and see if we can get them to breed with one of our other colonies have some captive bred queens. But there they are, doing their fun thing on the absolute raspberry vodka. It's not real vodka, it's okay. Yes. What can I say? Hours of fun with ants. We're gonna jump to today so you can see exactly what they've done and if they've destroyed all their setups. This is a couple of days later. And apart from the murkiness, nothing really much has changed. So I do have it a little bit hazy because we did add some water to the outworld because it's been super, super hot here in Southeast Queensland. Oh, look, there's two drinking. Oh. And what will happen with these ants is one like that one will drink water and then she'll just sit there, wait for another one to come along and she'll actually regurgitate the water into the other one's mouth. So she is huge, yeah. Very hard to show you how huge my tiny ants are, but there they all are doing their ant wonders and here is the nests. So this is where we are with all this sort of stuff. I still haven't managed to figure out where the queen is. She could be in there, she could be over there. But the new plan for this is to extend the nests all around the side. And yeah, maybe a few more tubes so we've got like a little mini highway thing happening. I still have all the ants up the top here. So I do want to extend that into a bigger enclosure. I think as they grow, we could probably have a bigger outworld up the top. I know. But so far, everything is working fine. The little tops, which have got the fluoron around the underside there, will stop the ants from actually getting out. I have a little bit of tape over there, so no one can put their little fingers in there. These lids are super, super secure. I haven't got them siliconed in place, but they are completely stuck in place. There's no way any ants are ever gonna get out. That is the update of our meat ant colony. I know, if you did enjoy this video, click the thumbs up so I know, because I don't think many people like ant videos. They're kind of cool though. If you do want queen ants as well, we do actually sell queen ants, and when you buy a queen ant, you get an ant in a test tube like that. So that is a queen, she has larvae. This is not a meat ant, this is a different type again. We have some very cool strobe ants, but they come in a test tube, with a little bit of water on one side, and yeah, you just wait for them to build up their numbers and then you add them to a little outworld. And you can get mini outworlds like these. That is a test tube, there is a queen ant in there. Actually, there is a cool strobe ant right there with some workers. And she has completely blocked up her water by using some of that bark. So they regulate the humidity with water and bark and all sorts of stuff and they do, like that, sort of cover the whole entrance as well. Very, very cool little thing. So after they've got enough workers for one of these, you can actually join up the little outworlds and nests and bits and pieces. This is a 3D printed nest and then they can just expand two little outworlds like these and then eventually turn into something like that. If you did like this video, as I said, click the thumbs up so I know, and we will see you in one of the next wonderful videos. Will it be fish? Will it be reptiles? Will it be ants? Who knows? <laughs> How cool are they, my lovely ladies?